Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to provide a valid conclusion when we're given the premises of an argument. In this case, we have anyone who's not a monkey is happy, no monkeys are honest, the unkind are unhappy, no comedians are dishonest, and one can rely on kind people. So at this point, we have written each statement in if-then form. Step two is to assign a symbol to each component of each of these statements. And I say a positive version of the component. So let me explain what I mean by that. The first statement says, if one is not a monkey, then one is happy. I'm going to choose to let P represent one is a monkey rather than one is not a monkey, the positive version of that statement. So in other words, one is not a monkey will be not P. And then I'm gonna let Q be the component one is happy. I just find it less confusing to always assign the letter to the positive version of the statement. So when I see a negative word like not, that I know to use a negation symbol. So I'm gonna let P be one is a monkey and Q one is happy. And then I'm gonna look at the next statement. In the next statement, we have one is a monkey, which we already have a symbol for. And then one is not honest. So I'm going to make a letter, a symbol, to represent one is honest. And that symbol will be R. Next I have if one is unkind, then one is unhappy. I don't have any components defined to be uh, anything to do with kindness. So I'm gonna define S to be one is kind, but I do have something about happiness, right? One is happy is already Q, so one is unhappy is a negation of Q. I don't need to define an entirely new letter, and in fact, that would actually mess us up. Next, we're gonna look at if one is a comedian, then one is not dishonest. So I'm going to need a letter to represent one is a comedian, that'll be T, but I already have a letter for one is honest, so I don't need something for not dishonest, which just means honest. And then finally, if one is kind, then one is reliable. I already have one is kind, but I don't have anything about being reliable. So that will be you. So at this point, we have a letter assigned to represent each component. So we're done with step two. So for step three, we're going to translate each of our statements into symbols. The first statement, if one is not a monkey, then one is happy, is going to be not P implies Q. The second statement, if one is a monkey, then one is not honest, is going to be P implies not R. The third statement, if one is unkind, then one is unhappy, means not kind, so not S, implies not happy, which is not Q. The fourth statement, if one is a comedian, then one is not dishonest, is going to be T for comedian, implies not dishonest means honest, so that would be R. And lastly, if one is kind and one is reliable, would be S for kind, implies U for reliable. These are our statements. And now it's really helpful when you're trying to come to a valid conclusion and you want to see how these statements connect to remember that the contrapositive of a statement is actually equivalent to the original statement. So for example, to say not P implies Q, if we change the order and the signs of the components, that's how I refer to it, the negation, I think of it like a sign, like from algebra, like in numbers. So we're gonna change the order, so Q is gonna come first and P is gonna come last. And since Q didn't have a negation, now it does, and since P did, now it doesn't. So we've changed the order and the signs. That's actually equivalent to the original statement. For example, in this case, if one is not a monkey, then one is happy, is equivalent to saying if one is not happy, then that means they were a monkey. Those are, the, those are both true in the same scenarios. So I'm gonna write the contrapositive of each of these statements, reversing both the order and the sign. Reversing both the order and the sign. 
So now when we're trying to come to a conclusion in step four, I can always use either the original statement or its contrapositive, whichever I prefer, because they have the same meaning. So let's look at step four, how we're gonna use these. We're going to create a chain reaction using either the original statements or their contrapositives, and then use the transitive property to draw a valid conclusion which is what we're going to do in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.